Right, let's get cooking. First at the Hobbs is a woman behind the award-winning London restaurant, The Modern Pantry. It's Anna Hansen. Great to have her on the show, yeah. Anna. So, what do we, what's on the menu for you? Right, so, anglaise steak, yep. chips. Anglaise steak and <laughs> chips. But anyway, you want me to get started over here, because we've got some of this sort of here. stuff. As well. So we'll start making the chips. You've got yep. some turmeric and ginger, which I'd like ground. Minced, should I say? Minced. Do you want this and grated then? Grated, really? minced. This one. Um, and I've got chickpea flour, which yeah. is also known as bee sand flour or gram flour. And first of all, just sort that together. And the idea, this is actually an idea that came to me. It's based on southwestern French dish called panisse. Right. Um, and basically, it's just boiled up chickpea flour, seasoned, fried, fried, and then seasoned, and that's it. But I've added a kind of an Indian twist to it with the. And this is fresh turmeric. This is what fresh, fresh turmeric, turmeric looks like. Yep. And it's great because it stains your fingers. It's it like does. you smoke about you 50 a like day. It's lovely. Like exactly. Wood yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how she's given me this to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so where's the idea of this style of cooking come from then? Is this because you travel a lot or is this New Zealand background or what, what is this? I think it's a combination of things. Um, the New Zealand background, yes. I need a knife. Um, kind of relatively young immigrant nation, lots of people trying out different things. Um, but also, I like to have lots of variety in cooking, otherwise I get quite bored. I like lots of different ingredients. Is all of so New Zealand like that, in terms of where food comes from? Because geographically-wise, you've got quite a lot of countries nearby. Exactly. Do you take influences from everywhere? Is that the key Absolutely. to it? Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, we've pretty much got every nationality represented there now, and everyone comes with their own influences and foods and so on. So we just kind of lap it up. And also, New Zealanders travel a lot. And I think that's a big thing as well. They go abroad and they come back with amazing ideas and then do their own version of it at home. Because so you actually trained with uh, Peter Gordon, didn't you? Peter really? Gordon, yes. My mentor. Your mentor. Incredible. Because he's incredible famous for chef. food like this sort of he is. mix and match in different ingredients, isn't he? Yeah, that's what he does. And he's a genius at it, I have to say. I suppose it what was, what was called back in sort of about ten Quick. years ago, sort of fusion food, wasn't it, really? Yeah, I'm yeah. not touching it. This is turmeric. Hurry I'm not... up. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, she says. Right, great. Yeah, it is fusion food. And, I mean, I think a lot of people think badly about fusion still, but when you think about it, it's what we're all doing. And as modern British is now more and more fusion, isn't it? Everyone's yeah. using... People experiment you know. with more and more ingredients, you're right. Yeah. yeah. But some, uh, so, sometimes oh. it's a bit over, overdone, isn't it, really? Well, but, like any, but I think it's yeah. like any food. It can be done well or badly. I've had plenty of pretty poor French meals and Italian uh, meals uh, and what have you. So, you know, in the hands of the right person, it's, understanding it's a great ingredients. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately, today, I am that right person. Right, so we've got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so, arguing. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just pouring this in. It's like, I mean, it's similar to making polenta. It goes lumpy quite quickly, so you need to keep right, stirring it. I've got a, a it. tray that's been in the freezer. Yeah. Lightly oiled. Speed this. Lightly oiled. Polenta and the nigella, or black onion seeds. Black onion seeds Or in the kulunji, bottom. or whatever you want to call it. What are they call? Kulunji. 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 There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> do you want me to whisk that up? Yeah, you can whisk that up. Okay. So Shall in I? there we've got the turmeric, the ginger. Yeah. Coriander, uh, cumin seed, fresh curry leaves, and a bit of green chilli. Yeah, and this will actually thicken up very, very fast. Yeah. See this. As it's going. So tell us okay. about this, this sort of steak then. So steak, this is anglais steak, or yeah. otherwise known as, they call it hanger steak in America, or it's skirt steak. And it's a really beautiful cut of meat. Uh, super tasty, because basically, it's actually two bits that hang together like this, covering the diaphragm of the cow, which is over all the offal. So You're selling it to everybody, aren't you? <laughs> but it really is delicious. I mean, it's, it's got great flavour and great texture, so it's absorbed all those kind of offly, you know. Now, it's unlike sort of the conventional steaks of that sort of place, because you, you'd have to slow cook them. This yeah, one you, this you cook one you quite need quickly. It. You right. cook it quickly. Super, super, super rare. Right, you can see how um, that's gone. Is that it now? Can I yeah, see this a little bit more, a little bit more. Come on, yeah, work it. You don't have to go to the gym later now. Isn't it? I've gym? saved you. I don't go to the gym anyway, love. Can't you tell? <laughs> you <go. laughs> were looking pretty fit. Yeah, easy now, Chris. Thank you very much. Is that it? That's it. Okay. It's a spatula. Spatula. Sits in the tray. Yeah. Let's get rid of that. 
Right. So as you can see, it's pretty porridge-like. Just flatten it out. And then you flatten it out with my fingers. Flatten it out with your flat. bare hands. Which is Go really nice, because it's now it's boiling up. Yeah, but it's... come on. You'll clean off the turmeric, Jason. What about this? <laughs> oh, look, Burn it all I just up. destroyed our watercress. Put some of this on. Yeah, that... Come on. Yeah, a bit of dust really helps me. Yeah, <laughs> that's out of protection. It makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> carry on. OK, so I'm moving on with the marinade. <laughs> I'll let you carry on burning What's in the marinade? Then? So in the marinade is dan miso. And um, this is something I learnt years ago. I think it's a Nobu um, seasoning thing. 17. Anyway, that's I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yes, it's yeah. what they put on the black cod. It's white miso, uh, which has been just cooked up with sugar, mirin and sake. And basically, you just bring it up to the boil to dissolve everything, whisk it together, and you end up with this. Yeah. Um, What's up to our water crash? You've looked like you've been at it with an accident. I had, it's I had an accident. Sorry. You're going to make a snowball. I was <laughs> trying to help and I hindered. Right, so, okay, that, so that is all that lot. All that up, lot? Yeah? yeah, could you chop me a garlic, please? Yeah. Right. Do right, you like okay. the way he's doing right. all the work? <laughs> <laughs> this is how I run my kitchen. That's chop, right. <laughs> okay. We had a little bit of time. And so the other thing I'm putting in here is tamarind. And for right. me, so basically you've got the salty sweet of the miso and then the sourness of the tamarind. And it works really well with the awful kind of flavour well, of the steak. The tamarind com comes as a lump like that with the seeds in it and everything, doesn't it? Yeah, really? and actually that's the best way to buy it too. You can buy it already sort of in, in a, a pulp, right. in a fluid form, but it's no good. You just put that in hot water, don't you? Yeah, hot water, boil it a little bit, and then yeah. pass it through a sieve. So this is it. Right. And then basically, this doesn't need do much trimming. Do just a little bit of cleaning up. The chips. Put that in the marinade. Think they're about there? That looks wunderbar. Give it a go. Oh! Ooh. 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 Maybe give that another 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Bit late now, isn't it? <laughs> Before you start cutting. <laughs> never right, seen so tell us about your book then. <laughs> <laughs> the Modern Pantry Cookbook. Yeah. Yes, it's a fabulous book. Yeah. It's kind of, it's about, you know, ingredients that are in the modern day pantry, as it were, especially this. when you're living in London. Things like bisan and using different cuts of meat and curry leaves and miso, like the den miso, for example, or tamarind, instead of thinking about it in terms of savoury, maybe doing a dessert with it, like we do tamarind yeah. chocolate truffles. Okay. They look great. Right. I'll so go have I got another steak? Yeah. yeah, I'll go do that as well. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to do I the said. chips as well. <laughs> Come on, Sorry. James, push on. There you go. Oh, Don't kind. forget, you find all the uh, Anna's recipe along with all the other studio recipes from today's show at bbc.co.uk okay. forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right, so chips. It, chips. You're getting big chips, is that right? Yeah, and then if you can just make sure they're dusted a bit more with polenta. And yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen you work so hard in all the years this show's been going on. Yeah, thanks very much, Chris. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> He's making up for it. Right. Chips, done. Right. Okay. Steak. Now, you don't want to put that in too hot a pan, do you, really? Because no. it'll burn, Anna. That's exactly it. Because there's so much sugar. Yeah. Um, over a really high heat, it caramelises too far. So, a moderate high heat. Yeah. Um, and that will do it. As you can see, it's going a little on the too golden side, but it will be fine. But the secret of this is always cook it sort of medium rare. That's medium rare. Never... In fact, rare preferably, but medium rare if you have to. Anything more than that, it becomes like leather. You don't like Shoe rare. Shoe strings. Oh. Sorry? Oh. I don't like rare. You have to taste well, you've had it on this, because the French actually, all late. they do is take the hooves off and walk it past the kitchen, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they show it the pan sometimes. It's still got a pulse, isn't it, this sort of stuff? Anyway, right. Exactly. Right, well, you want me to do a dressing, don't you? Yes, please. Or, or do you want me to do something? <laughs> What's this? That is pomegranate molasses. What's this? That is cider vinegar. And uh, this olive is oil. extra virgin olive That's oil. It. Right, OK, we're there. Salt and pepper, please. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, this isn't your recipe. I've just done everything, really. <laughs> it looks like people are panicking because they've remembered they've got guests coming. Salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's in the lounge. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Using a fork. Yeah. Oh I haven't got time to go over there and get a fork. But anyway, that. <laughs> Give it a quick mix. This is great. Right, I'll do your chips, don't you worry, you concentrate oh. on your beef. Well, okay. 
is done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the beef's done. It's great, isn't it? Because the other well very done, important Anna. thing yeah. <laughs> about this cut of beef, though, no, seriously, is that you need to rest it properly uh, because it's got a very loose grain and you are serving it super rare, so it has to have plenty of time to relax yeah. and get to know itself again. Okay. You take the salad over there, I want it back. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, so, over to you. Okay, so, so, in the dressing for the salad was a bit of oil. Yeah. Pomegranate molasses. Yes. Here and we go. Look at that. It's perfect. That mm. is how you, you should eat this. Pulse, yeah. this yeah. I told you. Oh, I'll have yours, Aaron. Those people with <laughs> HD TVs now are going to be going, what on earth is that? <laughs> That's how you should have it. Hang but, a steak. Exactly. And wait till you try it. And you, you put it long ways. It, yeah, against the grain. Uh, although when I was in America recently, they cut it with the grain. I'm not sure why. But for me, you need to cut against the grain because it's so course. That's what it is. It makes so, a lot so remind us what that is again. Uh, tamarind miso marinated on glazed steak with turmeric and curry leaf bees and chips. That's what it and is. And watercress. Thanks for that. There we go. Right, you get to have a seat over here. I feel like I need a seat now. After that. Dive into that. Wow, look at this. Steak and chips the modern yes. way. Mm. Yes. Well, well, the pantry way. Well done, Anna. Yeah. Oh, thank the modern you. country. I see James getting in your way a lot up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really well, well, so I had to stand still and not <laughs> yeah. do very much so that he could, you know. He was all over the place. Ready to talk with you, mouthful. That's amazing. It's incredibly tender, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Is. Surprisingly, tender. it's quite awfully as well, isn't it? The taste, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. So you don't mention well, the chips. I spent most of, <laughs> most of the last eight minutes. I thought the mate. chips were good. They were just a bit soft. They could have done with thirty seconds more. Right, anyway, while these lot dive in, we need some wine to go with this. We sent out wine. But Peter Richards to Berkshire this week, so what do you choose to go with Anna's sensational steak? I'm here in the ruins of Reading Abbey, and I'm just a stone's throw from the High Street where I've got some fantastic wines lined up for today's dishes. Anna's dish is essentially a modern fusion take on steak and chips, and if you're doing a classic version of this dish, you might go for a more traditional red, like a Bordeaux, but because of those fragrant, exotic flavours, we need something a bit richer, and if you're looking for that style of wine, then the south of Italy is the place to look, and I've got a beautiful wine here. It is the Torre del Falco Nero di Troia from Puglia. Puglia is in the sunny heel of Italy, so you get these ripe but very food-friendly and savoury reds. Now, this one smells like flowers and herbs, and that will pick up on the coriander and the watercress. Mm. There's lots of lovely, juicy acidity in there and soft tannin, which will help wash down that rich meat and pick up on the pomegranate dressing. Like most Italian reds, it comes into its own with food, and Anna, what a beautiful dish to do it with. Cheers. <laughs> well, everybody's diving in here. <laughs> Irene, first of all, you've tried that for the very first time, a steak like this. Uh, nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you well, like it. well done. <laughs> I like it. Well done. <laughs> what do you rate to the wine to go with it? I think the wine is a perfect match with it, actually. It really brings out the spices and... Great, That's loads great. of flavours going on there, Stuart, but yeah. I think we're... Yeah, quite spicy the chips now, actually. Yeah, so mm. really nice. Great combination. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Happy chips with that? Very nice. I'm really happy with that. I love rare meat. Yep. That's a, and that's just perfect. I've never had that cut of steak before. It is. It's tasty, one, one thing isn't it? It's really, really tasty. Yeah, yeah. You don't really yeah. get it in the supermarket, but butchers will get it for you. Yeah, no. exactly. It's not, it's not, <laughs> it's maybe in the modern pantry, but it's not, it's not, nothing you'll find in Londis. No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, right uh, later on, Stuart, has something very tasty for us. What is it again? A group, group That's it. Right, lovely. Yeah. Great. Uh, now let's catch up with Rick Stein.